Hi everyone, it's Vanessa. I'm back with a wrap-up of seven things that I have read in the past couple weeks, few weeks. Three of them, maybe four of them, are graphic novels. There's one nonfiction, there's one YA, and there's one middle grade. So pretty much I've been reading every kind of thing. I will start with a graphic novel, and this is Home After Dark. It is a brand new graphic novel by David Small. I'd never read this author before, but after reading this, I'm including him in my nonfiction November TBR, because he's written a graphic memoir before. Home After Dark tells a story of a young boy moving with his father after kind of being abandoned by his mother. The story is really dark. It sets a few decades back just the roughness that he grew up with and the boys that he was surrounded with. I think the strongest thing here is David Small's use of very little dialogue and also the way he creates an atmosphere with his shading and the lines in his drawings. I just felt so immersed in the story that I read the whole thing in one sitting. I think the heavy issues that it explores reminded me a little bit of this one summer and it's probably why I enjoyed it so much. I don't think everyone will love what's going on here, but I really enjoy reading graphic novels that have a, a heavy kind of tinge to them. And this one was definitely gritty and angsty and edgy in that way. Another graphic novel that I want to talk about is Sheets by Brenna Thumler. This was one I was so excited about because of all the marketing. I just I saw it everywhere and I have to say I was disappointed by this book. I think it is so visually stunning and I think the idea of using ghosts to handle grief. We have a main character here who is grieving the loss of her mother and kind of how absent her father and brother are and she has to step in and, and kind of be the leader of the household and in their business at a laundromat. So I like the idea of it. I just didn't think that the storytelling was very strong here. I often felt kind of confused about why we were talking about what we were talking about and what the whole point of it was. I think it was a lot more uh, abstract and I didn't really understand what the author was trying to get at. I think it's so beautiful. The coloring especially I think is fantastic but I just didn't really care for the story here and it's not one that I will really remember. Um, the third graphic novel is one I actually have on my self right now and that is The Prince and the Dressmaker by Jan Wang. I first heard about this over at Maria's channel. I just loved the way that it looked inside and I was like this is for me. It's just got the cutest little drawings. It's a story about Frances and how good she is at creating pieces of clothing and she starts making clothing for Prince Sebastian. It ends up being that Prince Sebastian likes to wear women's clothing and go out in women's clothing and it's a really touching discussion about identity and also about Prince Sebastian's family understanding this. The friendship between the two of them is really sweet as well. I like that it wasn't that romantic. It was more about the friendship and I love that Frances always stood up for herself and whenever Prince Sebastian would do something she didn't like, she had something to say about it. Yeah, this is completely adorable. If you're looking for a pick-me-up, I would definitely suggest this. The next thing that I read was Good and Mad, The Revolutionary Power of Women's Anger by Rebecca Traister. I was really excited about this. I follow the author on Twitter and she's fantastic on Twitter. I've also listened to her on podcasts and on other things on the internet and I just think she's got a really good brain about these kinds of topics. In this book we are discussing women's anger with the 2016 election and uh, the Women's March and the Me Too movement as well. I thought that this book was going to have just a little bit more history than it was going to have like current news events. We spend a lot of time talking about those news events and rehashing them and my favorite parts of this was really looking more at like the history and connecting that to the present. She does focus on history, um, like she looks at the history of women's anger through different angles that I enjoyed learning about like crying and why we cry or why we curse or why we use snark and humor to um, deal with situations where you're really angry and how women have used that. I also really enjoyed whenever we got the chance to learn more about specific women in history. I learned a lot about Pat Schroeder here, Barbara Boxer, and Maxine Waters. They're women that you know of but you don't really know that much about. I just wish that we had focused less on the things that I already knew a lot about and just rehashing the things that all of these abusers have done or what the 2016 election was like. Overall, I think it was fun just to hear her taking those people in power that are not great and her completely smashing them. But knowing what this book is now, I don't know if I would read it um, the first time over just because 
it was so much of a rehashing. I don't know where my dog is going, he's just backing up. <laughs> the next book that I want to talk about is a middle grade novel. It is The Parker Inheritance by Varian Johnson. This is a book that is mostly marketed as a mystery, a juvenile mystery, but it was mostly to me a historical fiction with a little mystery involved. The whole premise of it is that we're following our main character Candace, who's a 12 year old and she's in South Carolina for the summer in her late grandmother's house. Her grandmother kind of died with this aura about her from the community that she was not well because she was trying to find this huge fortune that was supposedly hidden and nobody believed that it was. Of course, Candace finds a letter that starts this whole thing over again where she wants to try to figure out where this fortune might be and finish her grandmother's work in that way. She does this along with a friend in the neighborhood named Brandon that she makes and that was my favorite part about this story is her friendship with Brandon and just how sweet they were with each other and how compassionate they were with each other. I valued the time that we spent with this boy-girl friendship. The thing I didn't love that much about this book is how much we did focus on that historical aspect. We had flashbacks and we kept going back and forth between the present and the past to kind of make you understand how this fortune came to be and like what race relations were like in the 1950s. There were a lot of characters to keep track of and I wasn't that attached to the historical characters as much as I was with the present characters. So if it had been like a little bit less historical, a little bit more tightened in those parts and more focused on Brandon and Kansas, I think I would have liked it a little bit more. The next book that I read that I really, really enjoyed was Sadie by Courtney Summers. This book is my third Courtney Summers book that I've read and I've had kind of like a back and forth relationship with Courtney Summers. I really enjoyed the first book that I read by her in like high school. Then I read Some Girls Are and I did not like it at all. And then I read this one, Sadie, and I really enjoyed it. So I'm just kind of flip-flopping here. But what I really enjoyed about Sadie, first of all, was the full cast narration of the audiobook. That is definitely, I think, the way that you should consume this if you can. The cool thing about the story is that it has a true crime podcast bent to it. So half of the book is the transcript from these podcasts that this public radio host is making, and then the other half is Sadie's own first-person account of what's going on. And you start piecing together this mystery of Sadie, her mother, and her um, sister who passed away was murdered and to figure out like what is going on here what is the full picture and you start getting that little by little as you keep listening this definitely has a lot of heavy subjects i think in similar vein of the female of the species by mindy mcginnis um it does deal with abuse and it does deal with family addiction i definitely wouldn't recommend this to like really young teenagers but i would recommend this to older teenagers and adults if you are at all in a reading slump i would also recommend this because i I read this in three sittings. I was so into it. And last but not least, the last thing that I read was Hey Kiddo. This is How I Lost My Mother, Found My Father, and Dealt With Family Addiction by Jarrett J. Krasowska. It's a memoir, a graphic memoir, from the perspective of Jarrett, who has done other graphic novels like the Lunch Lady series and um, picture books and other things of that sort. It's his own family story of his mother's addiction, how his mother was in and out of his life because of it. He was raised by his grandparents instead, and it was a very different upbringing because they were older and they had already raised a whole family of their own. Also about how he never knew his father until he finally made contact with him. Mostly this is him saying thank you to his grandparents for giving him a home. It goes from him in childhood uh, up to him being a teenager and fur further and just what he was thinking throughout all of this. I think the most touching thing about this book is in the back there's an author's note. It runs for like four pages. And there's a really really strong ending to it because it tied all of these pictures that I had been seeing and made me understand his story fully. Definitely would recommend this if you are interested in stories about addiction and graphic memoirs and graphic novels in general. The colors are also really muted and I like that the lines are super uh, steep. Is that the word? I don't know anything about art as you can tell. And that's it for all the things that I've read. Now I want to really quickly go through the things that I currently have out from the library that I'm thinking about reading or have already started reading. I started this morning, you don't know everything, Julie P by Alex Gino. Alex Gino wrote George, which I really enjoyed. I read it a few years back and this is the first time Alex Gino has written something new and it does deal with 
um, sort of the same social justice issues that Alex Gino books are known for. This one has to do with the deaf community and so far we've also been discussing issues about Black Lives Matter too. So this is hopefully something that I could recommend sooner or later but just in general I love these kinds of stories that are focused on real life things. I'm enjoying it so far. I also checked out which I think is the National Book Award finalist for young people's literature and this is The Truth As Told by Mason Buttle by Leslie Connor. I've heard that this book is really touching. I know that it deals with a boy who is just kind of too big, too sweaty, too everything, and not fitting in, and him befriending a kid that ends up going missing and him trying to figure out what happens. I checked out, which I don't know if I'm gonna get to, but a spooky October Halloween kind of read. This is The Agony House. It is actually half book, so normal text, and half graphic novel and it goes back and forth between the book and the graphic novel aspect of it and it tells the story of this creepy house and this is in New Orleans post Katrina and our main character trying to figure out what's going on in this house and the last thing is a Judy Bloom book actually this is two books in one this is just as long as we're together and here's to you Rachel Robinson I saw these were available on audiobooks so I got the book as well just so I could follow along. I haven't read a Judy Bloom book in a while and I've, I've been in the mood as you can tell from my this one and this one for touching little great stories and we'll see how I balance this. Am I going to finish all of this before nonfiction November or am I going to read this along with my nonfiction to kind of balance my my sad nonfiction reading. We'll see. Thank you so much for watching my video. If you've um, read any of these or would like to read any of these, for sure let me know in the comments and I'll see you in my next video. Bye bye.